Well, I gotta say, that South Florida game, that was... The final score, to, it, it's not what it looks like. Let, let's put it that way. Yeah, that game was a cluster. I mean, from the very start. I, and um, my focus today uh, is just going to be on referee. Uh, it, it's it's awful. Mm. We, we were not doing so hot. I mean, that, that whole thing where we fumbled to start off the third quarter, that was bad. That was horrible. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's just uh, – there never seemed to be any rhythm in the game, and um, I was kind of put off a little bit by the uh, refereeing. I, I thought it was very uh, inconsistent, and not only for the Alabama-South Florida game, but I'm going to give you some examples of the uh, auburn Cal game, where it's just um, uh, some of these calls are just nonsensical. I'll give you, I'll give you for instance, on that, um, South Florida's opening drive, okay? The uh, quarterback slips out of pocket. He's running up the sideline. And basically, as he's headed toward the sideline, Alabama defense back shoves him, pushes him out of bounds, and then boom, next thing you know, flag thrown. Okay. And, and you know, an, I guess unnecessary roughness, uh, late hit, whatever. And so that would have been fourth down and no, keeps the drive alive. And then boom, there you, there you go. Just keep on going down the field. And it's just, and you go back and, and I went back and looked. Looked at it on replay over and over and over. And I'm like, the guy was not out of bounds. He was running out of bounds. But you know how that goes. I mean, you know, if he, you got to make sure he goes out of bounds. You can't let him, you know, just, you know, you know step you, step away from you and keep going. So he did exactly what he was supposed to do. Late hit, boom, drive stays alive. Well, one thing that really helped the Alabama Crimson Tide was the third down conversions or – lack thereof from South Florida. Because as a matter of fact, they were two of 18. It, it's like it, if they were better on third down Saturday night, they they mm -hmm. would have had an easier shot at trying to get to us. Yeah, Alabama's defense, they lined up typically. They were a three, four man, um, uh, you know, a couple of tackles, a couple of defensive ends. Sometimes they would go three man front right there. Um, and then the linebackers, all they were doing was keying on, you know, the quarterback. And so we weren't getting an, enough pressure. There was hardly any stunts at all during the course of the game. So it was kind of – we knew um, uh, not a great passer, a good runner. He had over 100, 100 yards rushing. So it seemed like Alabama just was going to settle back, spy the, you know, quarterback with the linebackers. And, and, um, and originally, you know, that first opening drive, they're doing the Tennessee – hustle and just speed it up, speed it up, speed it up. But once Alabama was able, they had their success on, on first and second down. But when Alabama was able to get them into the third down, especially the third and long and things to that nature, you know, had a lot more success. But, you know, the the little – at the start of the game, you know, the runs and stuff like that and not getting any pressure when he was back there and then letting him, you know, kind of run around a little bit. Made it a little, a little tough, but – yeah, you know, it, 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 in the end, it, it worked out well, but it was still tight. And all the penalties, all the dumb turnovers, I mean, just you get, you know, uh, bottom line, let's get them out early, get them out of the way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we all got the nerves you're talking, I'm sorry, you were talking about that uh, kickoff second half. I mean, what do you uh, think? Uh, great return and then kind of fumble it at the end. It's, yeah, rhythm. Pitiful. Couldn't get a rhythm. It was pitiful. Pitiful. Yeah. And then it just every time you turned around, there was a penalty, not only for us, but also with regard to them. But some of the penal penalties were just, you know, just nonsensical. Just and I, and some I would I would question. I know Fromby over there on the, on the right tackle they were subbing uh, in. I know he uh, got a couple of calls there, but I went back and ran that. And and I mean, my gosh, you know, they always say you can call a holding every down in the offensive line and that kind of stuff. But I mean, ooh, I, some of those were just kind of. Could have gone either way, but anyway, yeah. they called him you know, and put him in a, in a tough on him. He took the brunt of it because you know, you know, called back a nice run by Milrow, that kind of stuff. But even that call, if you go back and look at it, it was kind of questionable. If if they hadn't called it, nobody would have complained. Well, and who is the who do you, who was the player of the game in your eyes for week two? I, I still like, you know, Justice Haynes and 
And bam, I mean, those two cats, I mean, those runs that they made, uh, I just like, they're like little pinballs going through there. And um, I'm going to put it on the, I mean, at the very end, I mean, they stuff the, those two guys, I mean, they sealed the deal. I, I really, really uh, thought they did uh, 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 well. They would be, I'd just give it to both of them. I thought that was, uh, made everybody happy. And those were good runs too, by the way. I'm not, I'm not going to take any, anything away. Those were absolutely good runs and a lot of contact, very physical, good cuts, and uh, pretty good, pretty good. They've got a, they got a dynamic duel right there, and I don't know why they didn't put, put them in the ballgame at the same time. To be honest with you, I think they will eventually, but, but uh, they do a good job. Well, and our buddy Five Adams says Tim Keenan was the player of the game. What do you think about that? Oh, uh, it, yeah, oh, I was thinking, oh, if you go on defense, yeah, yeah. And I felt bad for uh, uh, number 15, Jefferson. That, I mean, he stoned. You remember that? It was like nine so minutes left to go in, in the fourth quarter, and the quarterback scrambles once again. And, I mean, that guy's – I mean, that was – the way we taught it or the way I was taught when I played and then when I coached, I mean, that guy formed – uh, that quarterback up, and I mean that was a great hit. And I sit there and I was scratch. I said, "Are you kidding me?" And they called that targeting. And now we're going to lose him first half of the Wisconsin game. But I mean, he formed up, and uh, he, I mean that was a great tackle. Great tackle. I don't know what these guys are, what rules they're looking at when they're, re, you know, watching online, on, you know, over the internet or some booth there in Birmingham. But my goodness, that was a great tackle. I mean, he yeah. just had gone formed that guy up. So, uh, yeah. defensively, mm, yeah, I, th- I, yeah I, I agree. Tim did a good, really, really good job. Big man up front, no doubt. No doubt about it. No I'd doubt about it. I'd love to see a lot more pressure on the outside. You know, Dallas Turner, you know, th- you know those kind of guys. I'd le- love to see some more pressure outside and then funnel them up front to, you know, our, 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 you know, our down linemen. But um, we were just kind of – I don't know, a lot of times just, you know, they True. were staying in front of us and keeping us away. There were times we got got there, but um, I'd like – I would have loved to see more pressure from the outside and possible stunts, but they were just going to sit back and make that quarterback beat them, and it, it worked for a while, yeah. Well, and, you know, you mentioned that we'll have to put more pressure. That's something that we're definitely going to have to improve on going into week three. So, definitely. Anything- we're not We're not getting enough off the edge. Well, and I know, like, Kalen DeBoer in, like, some of the interviews, you know, he was like, you know, we got to make sure our offensive line's doing all right, you know, because, like, that he stressed that importance, you know, mm-hmm. make sure the offensive line's protecting your quarterback. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, uh, uh, I think I, I think the offensive line, you know, looking at overall with regard to the game, I think – you know, they were, I mean, they were stunting. I mean, they were blowing and going. I mean, they were bringing both backers. They were coming from the outside. And um, I don't think Alabama, you know, really for what they were doing, you know, I, I don't think they did a good job on the outside throwing some little screens, then throwing behind. You know, they didn't, I mean, Dupree on um, the tight end, did he even catch a pass? I mean, just bubble him right there behind those linebackers that are that are blowing, you know, the A-gaps and, and just – See, you know, run him right behind. They were soft in the secondary and just really, really coming after um, us up front. And I, I would have liked, I would love to have seen some intermediate routes, you know, over the middle and things like that. I mean, if they're going, re- if they're going, if they're going to come up the middle, then that middle zone, that little, those little hot routes that we used to call them, you know, run through the a gaps and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, and all you're doing is just re- replacing the linebacker. He's coming on a stunt. Your your running back or your little receiver is going to slant down in there and just replace him. Or especially the tight end. I never saw sure. a middle a route to the tight end through the middle of the field. I would check him and slow him down, but I never did see any of that. That's true. I mean, we're going to have to improve quite a lot going into week three. 